It's a blazing. of, uh, you know, the garbage, it is flooding that ensues. That is the sanitation, the sanitation woes, basically, of this community, Shukura, Bola Junction. It is hazardous, it is a health hazard, and the community members are complaining. According to them, they are saying that this cannot be possibly what makes Accra the cleaner city. So amidst all the chaos, we are going to engage community members to get their take on uh, these developments. Uh, Alhaj Babayara joins us now for a conversation. Alhaj, good afternoon. Afternoon, sir. Uh, how long have you lived in this community in the midst of this? I've been here for a long time, about 20 years ago now. About 20 years? And it's always been like this? Yeah, and we have been complaining about the gutter. Has anything ever been done about this situation? No at all. Only the game just beam the rubbish, that's all. But what we need is we want them to construct a very modern gutter from here up to Choco. And this is leading to Apia Dankwa with the this Choco line. So this is a very destructive thing when it rains. It, it can destroy lives. Has there ever been flooding for people to be affected on account of this place? Yeah, sometimes the, the water used to get back to people's houses. But if they remove the, the rubbish, we sometimes get relief. But what we need the government to do, we have been complaining. 
but nothing has been done. The MPP, the NDC, all together. So we are pleading to the government to come and construct us a very modern gutter, which will lead us, even they can construct us a street from the other side and this side. And this will help the community. Uh, let me ask you, in terms of health, what has been the impact of having something like this? I mean, the, the sanitation uh, issue. H how has this impacted the health of members of the community? Very bad. Very bad. People are complaining. Now, this is giving us diseases. Uh, but like, like this corona that comes, we have many diseases when you breathe the disease. What is going on inside? Ask well, me. at least uh, the coronavirus is not tied to uh, this kind of sanitation. But let me ask you, you speak about the MPP and the NDC. Uh, you're members of parliament. You've had members of parliament, I'm sure, from both sides. You have DCEs and the rest. What, what have they done about it? Yeah. Assembly men and women. They have done nothing for us. Nothing has been done. Mm. Yeah. We have been complaining to them, but nothing. They would just said they will come and construct it. They come and construct up to now. So who is your member of parliament? Does the current one is Abdul Latif Dan, mm. our honourable, yeah, honourable Abdul Latif Dan. He's with the NDC. Yeah, and we are sure that when this complaint goes to him, he can do better. You say when this complaint goes to him, but hasn't it gone to him already? No, he is now the current, and there are complaints that goes there, and has been receiving them. We are looking forward to what he is going to do for us to help us. Now, Neo Kaija is a unit committee member here in this assembly, and uh, he joins us for a conversation. You were born here? Yeah, I was born here and bred here. Uh, actually, this place, first, it was not a big gutter like this. There's a lot of weeds here. We used to bring cattle and sheep to come and be fed here. And there was a little small gutter. But as people are being migrated here and we used to open the gutter a bit so that when it uh, rain falls, there will be a flood here. But all the time, people used to dump, whenever they clear the gutter inside, people used to come and dump their uh, uh, rubbish inside. So I think some years back, if I can remember, during Rollins time, I saw, I saw Kwesi Ahoy on the television, uh, former minister for local government, talking about the uh, uh, the road and the uh, drain projects within uh, Accra, and he mentioned this project. So, as I know, I know that this project is in, is in the pipeline, but I think our leaders have failed us, especially uh, those from, from the uh, ministries, because I've heard of this uh, project for quite a long time, and they have to fix it, because if they do not fix it for us, it's all the time create problems. Every year, whenever it starts to rain, people get Corilla. Whenever you go to our nearby polyclinics, you can see people from this area. We have choked there. Corilla, Corilla all the time. So whenever it uh, rains, it's all, all of this place is flooded. And it is a death trap to some of our children because whenever they, uh, you don't take care and the, you fall into this gutter, this gutter leads straight into the ocean. And maybe you don't know where you are going to end. If you will end, then you lost your life. Have there been instances like that? Severally, severally severally. So we are appealing. This project is, is above a member of parliament, assemblyman, or any unit committee member. This is a World Bank project. This project is a very huge project. So we are appealing to any government who comes to power. We are appealing to them. They should come to our aid and fix this thing once and for all. This thing should not be like this. So we are appealing. It should be a big drain being covered that lead into the ocean. So we are pulled to any government. So we, uh, especially the assemblymen, unit committee and the member of parliament, they will say what they, uh, what they can do, but they can't do because this project should be the project of the uh, uh, government. So you're appealing to all of these bodies. You say it's above even a member of parliament. It's yeah. above an assemblyman or assemblywoman. Uh, that means it's a pretty tough situation. It means it would take some quite some backing, political will, yeah. to come and uh, do this. But in the past, uh, you've, you've spoken a lot. You're me mentioning the Rawlings era. That means this is a, a problem that goes past three decades. Yeah. 
So really, what, what do you think the next step should be? Where do you think you have to go to before you get some answers? Uh, actually, Member, Member of Parliament. Parliament. So that he will also push it to Parliament. But with the will and the zeal of the government, that can, this thing can be uh, done. But if they don't, I don't if they, they are not willing, they have another, another uh, project to do before this one, uh, it, it will be a problem for us. So we, it, it, this project should be started as early as possible. Well, maybe you should, you should communicate or you should uh, let this get to the desk of the Minister for Sanitation and Water Resources as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, that's also will be fine. But I, I, I think we uh, will we'll talk to our Member of Parliament too, so that he will also do his best to it. Akwesiewa is also a resident here. What's uh, in Oh, almost 25 years, Clyde. Almost 25 years? Yeah, I check. Now, then I'm here. I'm a driver. We're a driver. And see, I'm here to put him away, I say, I'm here to go to the ball, I say, I'm here to go to the ball junction. What are you saying? I'm here to go. I'm here to go to the ball junction. I'm here to go to the ball junction. I'm here to go to the ball junction. No more sanso eko fi bi e mu no mo mo ye toilet maye na ansa na ye ba tv so abe kase na o kase e bi no mo nipa janan ne nema pi ni na ye di gu ha kanokra ne che ye den na amanfo ye e di e di gu storm drain yi mo en se omo ntimi be gota no nti omo nya gota no bia bona container so nsi nti no mo di nwura no e friends yo no mo hwe gu nwura no so mo tugu ha no me atans me salam ati tu tete si bola wa ha me me si bola wa ha me nye inti o o ankasa anso o si bola wa si bola wa same environment ni ye because adi chong uton fruit wa ha evi ni evi ni edi ani na do asala wa ha once na kosi siwa obi benya yali ena yali ni fiya ha yohu inse mbo tu ya bua ye ni fiya biya benya toilet na se mbo tu ya ni bola container se siwa moya sa di o ni atu chama ba me gota ni su dia eno no Inti senia bola aje hani na ano senia wakano muapo mungu no hamo matesa cholera na na sefo mta yari yari pa yari nuo ho yari nuo pa yari bensa akora au nuno pa eni malaria eni njia we valo sefi America we yari huo gana hano mu for your friend say refuse and toilet and everything yao hano eni kuni yao hano mu inti masentra hii yangu kaza the problem eda hano mu. Matese mwa kaa 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 enkosi aga enti no se se no odwen ho se ye ba ene den ami ye hu peni bia no mpese ye ma ye me sori no ba runs no obomo di di container be si ya no ni etu hu se ne be ya a hanu be so because a sori do so a school so a ya nya sa enye yi ya le ne nya de to bi twa ni se ye me be bua ye eni aban ni nya no ya solve sa problem ya eni de enso be dana se na enso o ton so a eh etimi yiri e ba be bia wo ye djuma yi Anu ya shipa, ahati mi yema. Oh, eti bufa sukra anu ya shi, anu ya shipa ni sana kula i, amba bwa ipa di ani yeye veda masi. Adi kesi ya shipa. And that's a resident who is sharing his story. He says he's been here for about 25 years, and this has been the reality. There's no proper dumping uh, site for them to be able to actually dispose of their rubbish and so for him he burns his rubbish right here but there are others who just dump them directly into the storm drain and that leads to flooding uh, sometimes and it, it creates a lot of health hazards for the members of the community he made mention of cholera and malaria which members of the community suffer a lot isaac Boachi is a chartered accountant H how long have you lived here hey, over 50 years i stayed here as far back as 1957 so tell us, what is the history of this storm drain? Yeah, this is what we are saying that this storm drain just came about as a result of people developing areas and then water flooding their areas. So they decided, you know, to give sort of a drain, you know, a drain way here. But that's only, it's not the original intention. The original intention is that this is supposed to be part of a dual carriage, you know, from first light to chocolate. So I me, mean, all this, they have said everything already. I was here. So all that I just want to add to is that what we can now do is that we need the AMA or the, uh, you know, Minister of Works and Housing, you know, or the Minister of Works and Housing to engage a contractor to come and collect all this rubbish and then put in uh, what we call culverts. You know, when we have culverts, filling this, the whole thing, culverts from here to the end. 
and they just cover it with, you know, sand. Then whole thing, uh, the level, it will be leveled. You know, when everything is leveled, what's the gutter, what's the drain for you to put in anything? And then the AMA should rather disperse, you know, uh, distribute uh, all the um, rubbish collectors, rubbish bins to every house so that we can put in our rubbish. In course of time, they come and collect them. Do you, do you feel that will be the solution? Because there are areas where the rubbish dumps are there, but people still don't dump in them. Uh, but, you know, over here, we don't, I haven't seen any. Over here, I haven't seen any. So I believe that when we have rubbish, you know, bins all over, we'll, just, we'll be compelled to put in the rubbish so that in course of time, the, uh, what do you call Zoom lion, they come and collect them. Maybe we have to pay a small fee, and then that's all, we'll be okay. Over all these decades that you've lived in this community, what have you seen to be the health hazards posed by the dumping of refuse here? Uh, mosquitoes, we, 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 are, we usually experience a lot of, you know, in fact, I'll say malaria is quite endemic here in this area because of the, you know, when it's not raining, the stagnant water becomes a, flood, a, a breeding ground for the mosquitoes. You know, it's only when it rains that the water carries the lava all over. So all that I'm saying is that if we can get in culverts, you know, and then the water will pass through the culverts, you know, like a tube, then we cover here. Now, where if there's no tube, there's nothing, nowhere for you to put your rubbish, where will you put it? Will you put it in the middle of the road? Certainly no. Then this thing will be over. So I believe this is the best solution. So I think this is what the authorities should think about, you know, because every time governments have come and gone, more than four or five gone, rolling time, we didn't say anything. Uh, Kufa, we didn't say anything. Atamils, nothing. Mahama, no. Akufa, the first time, we didn't say anything. We don't know whether it's the second time that he will do. We don't know. So all that we are saying is that they should come and put in covet. They should remove all this garbage, put, get covet, fit here and then all over. And then cover them. The water goes through underground. And that's all. If we have a, like, we have got a street here, who is going to put a rubbish in the street? And, and then if they are able to do that, then it means the road project will be a viability and it will be a realization too, a reality. Because right now, if we can change, we can improve this uh, road, if we can come about to this road, it's going to change the economy of this area. People traveling from uh, what do you call, Kaswa to Chokwa and other places, they, they, will not, they may not need to go through Kanesha or what, they only pass here through first light and they go to Chokwa and then it will boost the economy, economy of the area. We also have in this community the Royal Gospel Preparatory School, and the head teacher is here to engage us. Uh, good afternoon. Afternoon, sir. Uh, what's your name? Seth Ampoma. Seth Ampoma. How, how long have you been head teacher here? Um, over eight years. Over eight years. And what has been the experience, uh, both from the teaching and from the student standpoint, as far as the storm drain and the rubbish uh, are concerned? Um, looking at the drain, it's a barrier to students from this uh, side of the drain but for those that are this side they make it possible to come to the school easily so we are trying to wait for the drain to be what made properly so that we can make a bridge when we make an attempt it's like the government hand is on it so we can't make a bridge neither making a wooden bridge so we are expecting that the government will try to look at it and make any effort to try to make the drain so that we can make the bridge uh, availability for the children to be able to move from that far end to the school. And not that only, also looking at the drain, the community have made a lot of um, uh, use of the, of the drain. If I say so, what do I mean? What I'm trying to say is that they normally dump rubbish in and it is becoming a problem. If I say a problem, as earlier, some of them make a mention of cholera and uh, that of malaria. We have had instances or cases that when a student is sick and is being sent to Shikura Community Hospital, it is being reported that they have cholera or malaria and it's due to this drain. And I'm expecting and pleading that if anyone who has the power and authority to look at it should come and uh, be of us of a help and not just a help but a great help. And I think it will help the whole community as a whole, but not only the school. And it's not only the school on that um, lane alone. There are a lot of schools on that lane going further, going to check out their schools all over that lane and also churches, also churches. And so availability of the preparation of the, of the drain will help all of us, as um, you asked. Okay. Uh, how many students do you have in your school? Uh, we have over 530. So approximately it's 536 students.
536, and all of them, most of them are impacted because it's difficult for them to even find their way to school. Yes, and some also are coming from Choco, and some of, some of them also are coming from Jamestown. Now let me ask you, when there's flooding, and I hear because of the refuse and all of that, when it rains sometimes there is flooding, how does that impact your school? Uh, yes, it, 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 it's uh, very negatively affecting our school. Uh, be the, the lower classes, it's a story building, so we sometimes try our possible best to find um, a place for those that are at the lower, that's the first, the, the last floor, to find a place at the upper floor for our students. And not only our school, there's a school also behind us, who also sometimes, the head teacher sometimes find it's a problem having the same. I think during the, um, the second outbreak of uh, burning, that's the filling station and that rain that came, or the storm that came, it also affected our school, but even side of our wall even got broken due to the flood uh, incident. We, we still are in uh, Ablukuma Central. Uh, this is the Mataheko electoral area. And for this place, in fact, from here leading down where you see this vehicle headed, one of the major problems they have is the absence of slabs. Like you can see right where I am pointing to currently. So when vehicles are coming, they have to meander left or right like we see another vehicle coming. And if someone plying this route is unaware of this hole here, that person just might have his or her car end up in this uh, little ditch. There is this one here, and there's another one uh, there. And it makes navigating your way on this stretch rather tricky. It's a problem for residents here, and you know, interacting with some of the drivers, they have said that it's a major, major issue uh, that they actually have to deal with on a daily basis. So I'm going to interact with one of the commuters, one of those who plies this route. What's your name? James. James, how often do you use the stretch? Uh, always. Use it always. Uh, are you, is this your private car? Are you an Uber or are, are you a commercial vehicle? My private car. Your private car, yeah. good. So looking at the situation, how you have to always, I saw you, you know, just trying to curve, find your way through. How difficult is that for you? And how, how much of a concern is it? It's really difficult. Sometimes when the tra there is much traffic or the traffic jams and you're driving, you would have to wait so that people pass by. But I see that if this, way, this road is done properly, we could drive through and then there will not be any problem in a day, yes sir. What is the effect, all of this, what is the effect on your car? We always have to fix our shocks. We always have to go and fix shocks. At least every three months you would have to fix shocks because of the you know, the potholes on this way. And that also takes a toll on your pocket. I tell you, sir. I tell you, yeah. Uh, now, what are you Ibrahim Isaka. Now, what are you saying? 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 What are you Cassia Tumpa, Papa, I'm for Tyson, be brebe. A honey hanging, be brebe, just say, Cassna Tumwa, and Sala Nancia, what are we two? There, I want Chehai, and also Cassin, a Cafuane Tumweni, the mere question, a hard dream, ye pa, a cost of getting to your echo, four years, Muni, Ben Caca Cracra, bear four years, and tea a shrimp and four, a woman of Mamma, and my own. And that is a typical example right there. A car trying to find its way through, navigate, and you see exactly what we are describing. That has just happened, and the driver is struggling to get out of that mini ditch over there. That is the reality of residents uh, right here. It, it is a very serious problem, and all of this happening in the Ablekuma uh, constituency, Ablekuma Central uh, constituency.
Yo, mommy, I'm back to your friends, eh? I'm back to your friends, Grace Lamte. Now, what is her infiahini? Oh, actually, I'm back to your friends, my papa. Now, I'm back to your friends. Enya kwa yeye ba na chese e yensembe bure se 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 ina unhu kwa ino kwa ni enya kwa enya kwa enya enya kwa yesi yesi ya ebesi yesi yesi ya yesi ebesi yenyi ni ye na chese inti MPs ne omo ma bani na moka nzo mnyo hii kwa kwa Sa frititi. Nancy o tonswe. Hey, nani ya bobo? Friti first light. Bo nuni ya babu bu. Ya abaf. Chui ni mbai papa. Obeti mi ya kangra. Eh, wao la fanya ba kumu. Kaka wao sa wao chua yako. Wao chumi ni bi fanya ba fte. Nui ba boto wao chumi ni kwa wao ni bi fanya. Mi ni wao fanya no ba fte. Ba ya wao sa yako. Just say, what no be bu bu na money man supi be say. Be bre. What drop na siwa? Mum ni a money a ufa insuo ufa insuo. Inti sa adenu si be infia hini. Oh, several years, several years. Na mate mate insu say eh ya yehu say kwa ino sano intokrobi e wohoho main gata numu no ah chese sometimes kwa insuo tua yesi ebi numu omu ni inti omu timi tum ne di omako e e ampa e ampa e tansi sa e tansi sa inti sese ya yesi insu tobre e sana babi omu no moja ni hose ah na insu mna pe na ya kumato insu ni mna pe na eto 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 na ya kuma atu na mukuma itu because soon start it, but who send soon a bow? A baka kaka bow off a sudden. Now, Emma, now a rack or done. And to say, say, you know, Dane Nanka, Ubet Menno MP, was assemblyman or woman, and now Ubiakasa, Dane, now Pesce Omoye. And says, I, Yakasa, said that in San Etier. And to whom send soon him rapper, now you are starting a dinner, Yanya, my costume. So what table we are now packing with your money, Guso? Auntie Grace, you are just saying what you are saying. And so, in a nutshell, what she is saying is that she's been here for a very long time. Uh, she inherited this property from her parents, and the road is terrible, uh, to put it mildly. And she also says that some of the culverts here, some of the gutters, you know, when they get full. Uh, sometimes it has been recorded that there have been instances where people actually fall into them and get swept away uh, by the rains. Another thing she made mention of is that when it rains, because it's a bit low here, uh, those on this floor usually have all their, their belongings, uh, sometimes even the wardrobe, everything in it uh, becomes soaking wet. So they have to carry whatever valuables they have to higher floors. That is the reality of residents right here in Abilikuma Central. Okay, so my name is Ebenezer Anan. I am uh, the chief executive of our community focus, a community-led development NGO in our communities. We have taken it upon ourselves to uh, drive, uh, to uh, voice out the concerns of our communities. We are letting the communities know that, look, if our communities will develop, it depends on what we do. We have looked at the trajectory from 92, government after government, and the development in our communities, we have not been able to attain or achieve it. And we are letting the communities know that, look, if our communities will develop, we need to be part of the governance process. We need to hold the assembly accountable. The government agency for development in our communities is the assembly. Do the communities know? They don't know. All they know is the politicians. And we are saying that, look, let us focus on what we can all do for our communities' development. So this is what we are doing. And then we have been doing some work in our communities before the assembly elections, uh, district level assembly elections. We were very, very uh, involved in it. And so recently, too, we also had a, uh, a stakeholder engagement with assemblies, and we are uh, also doing this. So basically, it is to let the communities know that, look, if our communities will develop, we have to be part of it. We have to know what is going on in assembly. We have to know what they are doing. And we have to be even interested in our communities' development. So this is what we think we can do to help and make our communities develop. In essence, if you do this, our communities will change. 
all the time you look at the, to the politicians. And the politicians haven't done anything. Right from Rawlings' time, as we began the Fourth Republic, look at our communities. If you put your community in your hands and you want to score, it is just something like 2 to 3%. Uh, to, uh, you, uh, exactly. You score yourself, uh, and you are to score yourself of a, a, mask of ten, a mark of 10, you give yourself 3 or something, because our communities are not improving and getting any better. So we have taken it upon ourselves as community-led development NGO or community uh, people to drive the agenda. So that's what we are doing, and we hope that it will go down very well. I'm Gideon Otoshi, and I'm a member of the NGO. We are here to make sure we fix our institution. We should make our institutions to work for us, because otherwise, you know, we, we don't have any environment, any anywhere to live. That's what we have. So let's fix Ghana. So that is the reality. You see what we live with. That was my interaction with some residents of Ablikuma Central, starting from Shukura Bola Junction all the way to the Mataheko stretch and the flooding, sanitation, and even, well, road uh, situation in that part of the country.